today i am going to discuss about the structure of anther structure of anther anther is a long structure present attached to the tip of the filament of the stamen it consists of generally two lobes which are connected or fused by a midrib called the connective each anther lobe contains two longitudinally running chamber called the microsporangia of pollen sac The two microsporangia of each lobe fuse to form a single pollen sac. The connective is a non-sporangia tissue and contains a single vascular bundle in continuation with that of the filament. This is the structure of anther. Anther wall. The anther wall is differentiated into four types. Epidermis. It is the outermost layer of the anther and mainly protects the linear tissues by preventing water loss. It consists of cells which are flattened and spread. Some epidermal cells at specific site get differentiated into small specialized cells that split at anther maturity. This site is the stomium. The cell of epidermis divides by anticlinal divisions only. endothesium endothesium is the hypodermal layer of the anther wall present lying immediately below the epidermis maximum development of this layer is seen when the anther is ready to dehiscence the cells of endothesium are uninucleate highly vacuolated and become readily elongated the thickening contains fibrous bands of lignocellulose deposits the outer tangential wall remains thin the endothelial layer around the junction of two sporangia do not exhibit secondary thickenings endothelium fibrous bands provide me- mechanical force for anther dehiscence middle layer 1 2 3 layers of the cells below the endothelium constitute the middle layer This layer contains cells which are flattened, thin walled, uninucleate and vacuolated. Middle layers are generally ephemeral that is they become crushed during formation of macrospores by meiosis. The cells of the middle layers in many species contain starch mostly which are mobilized during pollen development. Sometimes secondary thickenings similar to endothelium development in the cell walls of the middle layer and this help in dehiscence tapetum it is the innermost layer of the anther wall and surrounds the sporogenous tissues in all the four microsporogenesis tapetum is of great physiological significance as its functions are related to pollen development typically tapetum is single layer of cells tapetum is generally formed from the primary parietal the outer layer containing smaller cells are derived from the parietal layer according to maheswari the tapetum is always parietal in origin tapetum attains the maximum development at the tetrad stage of microsporogenesis types of tapetum basing on the behavior of tapetal cells there are two basic type of tapetum first amoeboid amoeboid tapetum also known as in base tapetum second is secretory tapetum also known as parietal on glandular tapetum amoeboid tapetum the type of tapetum which shows early breakdown of their inner and radial walls of cells and shows movement of the protoplast mass into the anther cavity is called amoeboid tapetum this cell have high metabolic activity the cell organelles in the plasmodium get recognized rather than degeneration formation of orbicules do not occur in such type of tapetum amoeboid tapetum is commonly seen in monocots example trades cancia bracti typha sp etc some members of asteraceae in dicots 
secretory tapetum. This tapetum is characterized by no charge on the position of the constituted cell throughout the microspore development. The cells remain in their original position. These cells only degenerate at the time of pollen maturity. Such type of tapetum is common in dicot and in some monocots like members of Poesi and Liliaceae. Presence of sporopollenin granules or bodies called orbicules or orbix bodies. Such bodies are formed from the proorbicular or proorbix bodies. Proorbix bodies are continuously formed in the tapetal cytoplasm. Such bodies with sporopollenin deposits are now the orbix bodies. Orbix bodies and spherical in nature and few microns in diameter. Tapetal membranes. A tapetal membrane is formed in the secretory tapetum at the tetrad stage. When the inner transgential wall of the tapetum disintegration, it originates from the secretion of the tapetal cell. It is largely composed of sporopollenin. Polysaccharide like cellulose, small amount of pectin and callus. On this membrane, orbis granules are studied. In grasses, three layers of tapetal membrane been, has been observed. Has, Haslop Harrison viewed it is a culture sac that encloses the developing microspores. Functions of tapetum. Functionally, tapetum is a very important part of the anther wall. The following functions are performed by the tapetal layer. It helps in the supply of nutrients for the development of pollen. It helps in breakdown of callus by secreting an enzyme called callus. It supplies the precursors for formation of sporopollenin. This is required for the formation of the sporopollenin. Tapetum is also provides the pollen wall protein. Orbicules. They arise as lipid droplets in the tapetal cytoplasm and are known as proorbicules on proorbic bodies. The anther locules where acquire the coatings of sporopollenin into orbicules. Orbicules are seen only in the secretory tapetum the, and clove contact with the pollen grains. In transport mechanism of sporopollenin for the external thickening, orbicular wall is supposed to play active role in pollen dispersal. Tapetum type Amoeboid tapetum Secretory tapetum, development of anther. The anther becomes differentiated to a four-lobe structure with anther wall and microsporangia. The cross-section of a young anther shows a mass of undifferentiated homogeneous parenchymatous cells of the epidermis. It becomes slightly four-lobed and a cambial strip at the center. This cambial strand forms the vascular bundle. It is the transverse section of anther structure.